The title of the message is Ignite the Fire. Over the last few days, as we've been seeking the Lord, he has been speaking to us about uh, igniting uh, and, and igniting the fire, that we can all ignite the fire within us. And that's what we're really talking about today, igniting the fire. It's a fire within us. And the fire of God is the very presence of God. And if you want more of the presence of God, you, of the fire of God, you need to be in his presence. And we're going to talk about what the fire does and, and how we can get more of it. Uh, what does the fire do? Well, it purifies us. Amen. When you get into the fire of God, he's going to point out things and and strip things away and, and things that have held us back. And, he, and those are the things that have put us in bondage. All of those are going to be destroyed because it's the fire of God that destroys the work of the devil. And Jesus came oh, yeah. to destroy the works of the devil. And he came with fire. And so we've got to have fire, the fire of God to destroy the works of the devil. Uh, not in other people's lives. It's not about the... Uh, looking at different people, but it has to start with us. The fire starts here. It's, it's not like, well, we're going to get our uh, spouse uh, changed or our children changed, yes, uh, uh, and then uh, we'll get the fire of God. No, you've got to have the fire of God to begin with. It Amen. all comes Amen. out of the fire of God because that's the presence of God, and that's what uh, Sherry was uh, referring to, that Hebrews 12, 29 says, God is a consuming fire. He's going to consume up all of those things yeah. that are impurities, that are evil, uh, all of it by his, by his fire. And so we want to think about what, what does it do? Well, it, it purifies us. It destroys the works of the devil. It glorifies mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. and it brings heaven to earth. Hallelujah. So let's take that concept for a moment uh, and look at uh, bringing the fire, bringing heaven to earth. Uh, if we go back to first Kings and, and we see a man, Elijah, Elijah was a fiery prophet. And uh, the first thing he said, he said, I stand before the presence of the Lord mm -hmm. and it's not going to rain until I say it's going to rain right, for, right. for these years. And so where did, he, where did he have that power to make a proclamation like that? It was because he said, I stand in the very, very presence, presence of, of the Lord. Lord. So that's where you get it, standing in the presence of the Lord. Now, let's just look at his life for a moment. Uh, we see that he said it's not going to rain, so they had a drought. And, and the basic idea of what he was doing was turning the hearts of the people back the hearts of the people of Israel back to God. And then in uh, the 18th chapter of 1 Kings, he calls down the fire. We all know this story. It's a very uh, powerful story, very powerful uh, and very important story. He called down the fire. But now this is not the last thing he calls down. He calls down the fire and, and some people, soldiers, a captain and his 50 soldiers come out to arrest uh Elijah, and he just called fire down on them. And then another <laughs> captain and his 50 comes to, to arrest him, and he calls fire down. This is a fiery prophet I'm Woo! talking about. A prophet. Amen. And he comes from being in the presence of God. And then, uh, uh, so another, a second captain and his 50 men come out to arrest him, and he calls down fire, and they're all burned up. And then a third one comes, and and he falls on his face and he doesn't want to be consumed. And his men don't want to be consumed by the fire. And so they they just take him uh, and ask him if he would go with them. So it's, he was a fiery prophet and it was a fiery spirit that was upon him. And at the end of Malachi, this is the end of the Old Testament, it said the that Elijah's coming again. Hallelujah. And this means the fiery spirits are coming again. The fiery spirit is the a fiery spirit of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Again, now what is he going to do when it comes? It's going to prepare the way of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so we see that's what John, John the Baptist did. He came in the spirit of Elijah, but I could also say he came in the spirit of fire. 
And he prepared the way of Jesus. Now, what I said, that uh, it takes the fire to bring heaven to earth. And to have Jesus come from heaven to earth, there had to be somebody there with a fiery spirit uh, to bring forth Jesus. And so John the Baptist was the one that prepared the way for Jesus, and he had the spirit of fire upon him, had the spirit of Elijah upon him. That's what Jesus said uh, in the 17th chapter of uh, Matthew. And so that's what it's going to take. And in order for you to bring heaven to earth, you've got to have the fire, the, the spirit of fire with the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Now, John the Baptist said, there's one coming after me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He hadn't seen Jesus as the Messiah yet when he said this. He said, there's one coming after me that's going to baptize you in the, the Holy, Holy Spirit Jesus and fire. fire. And so this is the one. Where, who is that? Well, it's Jesus is bringing heaven to earth. He's preparing. John the Baptist there was preparing uh, the people for Jesus to come forth, bringing heaven to earth. And it takes a fiery spirit. And for you to bring heaven to earth in your situation, in your family, in your neighborhood, you've got to have this spirit of fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit. Now, today, I'm not really talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I hope that you have it, um, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. I hope you have it. But if you don't, you can be like me and, and like Sherry. We just sat in our living room and yeah. asked the Lord, and he gave it to us. So uh, we were baptized with the uh, Holy Spirit and fire, and we continue to stir up the fire within us. Uh, hallelujah. So we carry the fire of God, but where did it come from? Being in the presence of God. That, that's where it comes from. You can't get it any other place. Yeah. I think Sherry wants to say something. Well, I have a little, I have a little uh, song in my spirit. And, uh, and it really uh, tells us uh, about the fire. And it says, uh, in his presence, in his presence, there is peace. In his presence, in his presence, there is joy. I will linger, I will stay in his presence day by day. Till his likeness can be seen in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So bringing heaven to earth is going to take the spirit of fire. And it's going to take the spirit of fire in you. And now how do you bring uh, heaven to earth? It's, well, let's say you encounter a person who is in turmoil. You speak peace to that person, Amen. Amen. bring the presence of God to that person, and you're bringing heaven to earth. Oh, hallelujah. That's good. See, That's see good. it's not just uh, patting him on the head and said, well, yeah, be go warm, your way. Be, be warm, warm. Fed, be, <laughs> go your way. No, it's bring the presence of God, bring his fire into their life. That's how we bring heaven to earth. It's going to take fire. And without fire, heaven is not going to come to earth. And in your situation, you've got to have the fire in order to bring the heaven to earth in your situation. Uh, it's one thing to talk about the scriptures. It's one thing to uh, know and intellectually know and memorize the scriptures and quote them out. But that's all mental power. That's not the fire of God. Mm -hmm. And see, the fire and the energy and the power of God, those are all uh, connected. Now, it's also going to glorify uh, God, uh, you know, 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says in everything and all that you do, do it to glorify God. And it's going to take the fire to glorify God. Now, Jesus has already glorified us, uh, but we have to come into his presence and get all of the impurities out and to bring, not our body, our body hasn't been glorified, but but our being has been glorified by Jesus Christ, the work on the cross. And, and what we do is spend time in the presence of the Lord, and that fire will clean out anything in us that is not of God. Amen. And I want to talk about this impurities. And, and we could talk about uh, different kinds of things, anger and fear and all of that. But I want to focus on 
love and perfect love. And how, how do we get perfect love? Well, it comes from fellowship. And when you, you can see this or when you read First mm -hmm. John, it comes from fellowship with, with the, the father, father and the son. son. When you fellowship with the father and the son, then you begin to receive the Holy Spirit and you begin to see receive the presence of the Lord in the form of fire, the fire of God, because God is a consuming fire. Deuteronomy 4.12 says that God speaks from the midst of the fire. Woo, glory! He speaks out of the midst of the fire. And uh, Jeremiah 23.29, I believe, uh, says that he his word is a fire. His word is a fire, and he is a fire, and he speaks from fire, and so his voice is fire. Now, if you're not hearing his voice, you uh, yourself, if you're not hearing his voice, you're not hearing the fire. You, you can hear the, the intellectual uh, interpretation of the Bible, but that's not fire. It has to be by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will bring fire. And so when you hear his voice, and so what is his voice going to do? Well, it's going to give you an identity, mm -hmm. and it's going to give you a history. And I want to talk about these uh, things after I talk about this perfect love that I started. Perfect love. So we've got to spend time in his fellowship, in fellowshipping with the Father and the Son, and also uh, 1 John 4, 12 says that we uh, love one another. And by that is his love perfected in us when we love one another. And there's another verse, I believe it's 1 John 2, 5 says his, love, his word. When we keep his word, we do his commandments, his love is perfected. So basically the three things that we can find there in 1 John that causes all the imperfections perfections, all of the impurities to uh, be removed from our lives, and that is to fellowship with the Father and the Son, and to love one another, and, and to spend time in his word, and let him speak to you. His voice mm -hmm. is a fire, and, and those are the things that will give you uh, perfect love, that'll put, that will take out all the impurities, and then 1 John 4, 17, it says, with this perfect love, see, Getting rid of all of the impurities as he is, so are we, we on the are, earth. Woo, hallelujah. So, so you've got to be in the presence of the fire of God to become like him. So why, why would we want uh, to be interested and study the fire of God? Why do we even can be concerned about it? Because that's what makes us like God. Yes. It makes us like yes, Jesus. Yes. It's the fire. He's a fire, and, and Jesus is the express image of the father and so it's going to make us like the father and like the son Amen. Uh, the fire Amen. does it's the fire that does that and the fire gets rid of everything that keeps us from being like the father and like the son it, it's going to burn all of those things away so that's a pretty important reason why we consider the fire of god and why we're considering it today because we want to be like him. Why do we want it? Yes. We want to be like him. And when we're like Jesus, we can walk on the earth. We can walk through our family and through uh, other situations and through our neighborhood. And we can do what Jesus did. He said, if you believe in me, you'll do what I did and you'll do greater things than this. And so for us to do that, we've got to be like him. We've got to get rid of the impurities in our life. And when we do that, we're going to bring forth fruit that will remain, then we will glorify, uh, glorify, glorify the Father. Father. Isn't that exciting? Yes, it you is. You want to bring forth heaven on earth. We need to walk like Jesus walked on this earth. He walked uh, as a man filled and embodied with the Holy Spirit, immersed in the Holy Spirit. And because of that, he could speak peace to the storm and he could tell the sick person to arise and be healed. And so don't you want to have that kind of authority? It comes out of a relationship and a fellowship with the Father and the Holy Spirit and the, and the Son. Uh, and because you're so close to them and so uh, caught up in the fire of God that's 
purifying you and, and all of those things are not only purifying, but see, it's freeing you up. Yes, it, makes you, I mean. it makes you free from the things that hinder you and, and pull you back. Now, I want to get to how can we get it? How can we get the fire of God? Well, we, we've got to spend some time. It, it yeah. talks about our love being perfected in fellowship with the Father and the Son. We've got to spend some time there. And with the Holy Spirit, the Father. The I Son. will linger, I will stay in his presence day by day till his likeness can be seen in me. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> we we have to your likeness. <laughs> <laughs> Be seen in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be seen in me. Amen. 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 <laughs> and we need each of you needs to be on fire like Jesus. Yes. Yes. And Amen. when you're on fire, yeah. see, that's gonna that's gonna cause me to be on fire. Yes. As I rub up close to you, as you're on fire then I'm going to be on fire. So how are we going to establish this fire in our life? We have to establish a history uh, with God. And so we have to spend time there. And, and when you face a difficulty, what do you do? Well, do you run and hide, uh, get in bed and pull up the uh, bedspread over your head? No, you go into the presence of God Amen. and you spend time there when you face a difficulty or when you need an answer, spend time with God and stay there until you hear him speak. And when you hear him speak, here it is, it will ignite you with fire. Woo, glory! Now you may have a difficulty and you uh, spend time with him. And sometimes I, I have fasted and prayed for days because I needed an answer and it might not come immediately, but I don't leave until I get the answer. And the, the problem may not change uh, when I have the answer, but I know that God has made a way of escape out of every Amen. difficulty. Amen. Amen. And so I have to hear what he's saying to me in this situation. And what worked in the past might not work okay. today. Yes. We've got to go back into his presence and don't just rely on things that happened in the past. But what I'm talking about is this history where you have encountered God and he has spoken to you. And that gives you an identity of who you are in Christ uh, because he has revealed things to you. He's revealed himself to you. And see, history is a series of events, a series of events uh, about a particular person's life. And so I have a history of my life and I can go back to the days and I, uh, uh, I can, in some cases, tell you the month and the day and the year. Sometimes I, I can't be that precise, but I know the place and I know where, where he spoke to me. And uh, there's a, a, a place in our house, for example, um, 40 years ago that uh, or, or so after I'd received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, one time I was up in the middle of the night and, and I heard Jesus speak to me, just like he spoke to Peter and the other uh, disciples and said, can you pray with me for one hour? Whoo, glory. When he asked me to pray with him one hour, I fell on my face and I prayed for an hour and, and maybe longer. But you know, there was no hesitation. Now, Peter couldn't do it that night. When he asked him to do it because he wasn't he wasn't Baptized, born again yeah. as we know it and he wasn't filled with the holy spirit uh as we can be and and so that night after i was soon after i was filled with the holy spirit i fell on my face and i prayed with him for overnight because he's appeared over to me hour. over an hour because he appeared to me and asked me could i pray with him an hour and i I was so excited because he had asked me to pray with him for an hour. And, and not only that, but after the, it was over with, I realized I could pray with him. Uh, and yeah. so, uh, yeah. so I don't have to 
uh, relate to Peter's situation that in the flesh he couldn't pray for an hour. But because I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and with the fire of God, I knew I could pray with him for an hour. And that's happened many, many times over the years. But that was one of the first experiences after I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I, and I uh, found out that I didn't have to relate to uh, Peter's fleshly ways, but I could, uh, I had the power and fire the Holy Spirit within me that would uh, enable me to pray with Jesus. When he comes to me and, and speaks to me, can you pray for an hour, Freddie? Yes, I will. I, I just fall on my face and I can do it now. And, and that just gives me such an encouragement. It did from that moment on that, that I knew I wasn't like fleshly Peter at that moment. Now, uh, the the Peter that stood up on the day of Pentecost was a different person Amen. Uh, than, than the one that slept when he was supposed to be praying. That, that's a totally that's different person. Because he had the fire. Because he had the fire. He stood up on the day of Pentecost and led thousands of people to the Lord Jesus Christ and explained things that nobody had ever explained before, but he explained it in a pure and simple way because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And you can do the same because you being filled with the Holy Spirit and on fire for God, you, you can change situations. And so you need this history. You need the history with God. You know, Paul said in, uh, I believe, 1 Thessalonians 2, 5, uh, that I would, I had a desire to impart, if it was possible to impart my very soul to you, or in other words, he'd be saying, I, I, I would desire to give you my history. But we all have to develop our own history, which is the, is the series of events, of past events where God has met with you and spoken to you, Amen. And called Amen. you by name and, and given you instructions and told you your purpose. That's, a, that's history then gives you the identity. And I think about over the years when Jesus called me by name and when he's spoken to me, when he's revealed uh, what he's called me to be, he's given me a history and that I can go back to those places. And just like I was telling you where I fell on my face there and prayed with him for an hour that night, I can go back to those places. I can go back in my mind to those times when he spoke to me and said something to me and gave me identity. That is the identity of who I am. Uh, you might say, well, uh, but I, I knew you there. Or I knew the way you were. Well, that's not who I am. I am who Jesus says I am. And then in 1 John uh, 4, 17, it says, as he is. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. As Jesus is, so are we on the earth. Amen. So I'm not the same person I used to be. And, and I haven't yet arrived. That's what Paul said. I, I haven't fully gotten to the place I'm going to be, but I'm pressing on. I, I'm on, on the way to the mark. And this fire is important. And God's been speaking to, about fire to Sherry and me all week. Uh, ignition. Ignition. What was the word he was saying? That's what he said. Ignition. We, yes. we, we all need this ignition to ignite the fire within us. It's within us. And this is the fire that's going to bring heaven on earth. Hallelujah. Our, our mission. Number one overriding mission for all of us is to bring heaven, heaven to, earth. to earth. Now you might say, well, but he said in uh, Matthew 28, uh, 18 and on that we were to make disciples and disciples of the nations. And, and, and yeah, but that's all bringing heaven to earth. Don't you see it? It's bringing heaven to earth. Bring the presence mm -hmm. of God Hallelujah. into the people. Yeah. When they experience the presence, presence of, of God, God then they're going to be changed. Amen. You, you can't Amen. disciple people without the presence of God, without bringing the presence of God into their life. Amen. When you resent them with the presence of God because of uh, the words that you speak, because uh, of what the insights and the discernments that you have, and the wisdom that you have, and, and the power of God that flows through your hands and, and through your words, that's bringing the presence of God uh, into the lives of the people. That's bringing heaven to earth. And all of those other commandments are just simply a part and, and uh, a part of that one general overriding uh, commission that we have and mission that we have. And that is to bring heaven on earth.
You, you can't disciple anybody without bringing heaven in their earth. In their earth. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. Spend time Thank with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, and, Jesus. And if you've got a difficulty, you stay there in his presence until you hear him speak. It's his voice that will give you that fire. And you might say, well, I, I had a problem and I went into the presence of the Lord and I heard him speak to me, but I don't know exactly what it means. Well, there's a there's a step beyond that and it comes from John 16, 13, the Holy Spirit, Spirit will unveil the truth, truth to, you. to you. So maybe you've heard his voice, but you don't yet know everything about it. And that happens many times to me. I hear his voice. I hear words. I, I see visions. Yeah. I, I, I have all kinds of uh, things coming into me from the presence of the Lord, but I don't know everything yet. And, and so I'm relying on the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is going to reveal those things to me. But when I walk out of his presence and I've heard his voice, I know I have the answer that I have sought. And yes. when I know I have the answer, then I'm developing that history over time. And when God, when you have a history with God, he will use you to change history and to make history. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be on fire. Thank you, Jesus. For God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I think part of our responsibility uh, today uh, to all of you is uh, my responsibility is to release uh, that fire to be uh, ignited on the inside of you. Many of you are already um, fiery individuals and you've got that fire on the inside of you but some of you have put uh you put a lid on it you put uh restrictions uh on on you know this is how i want to be used of the lord or this is how uh he's going to use me and you've restricted uh the fire and so today in the name of jesus in the name of jesus if you want that fire to be uh, rekindled and ignited in you. Hallelujah. Just raise your hands to the Lord uh, because I'm going to receive it myself in the name of Jesus. I want more of his presence. I want more of his fire. I want more impurities to be cleansed out of me in the name of Jesus. Uh, I want to have that perfect love so that I can love uh, others as Jesus has loved me. Hallelujah. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I release uh, the fire of God to come into each one of you, even those that will be watching this video at a later time, in Jesus' name. If you're watching, then the fire is being poured out in you and on you, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I thank the Lord for that. I receive it myself. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo!